Dawn of Titans, Q&A answer strategy. There are times when you prefer not to answer the questions someone has asked you. Here are several ways you can avoid answering questions without being impolite. Refuse politely. Ask another question. Answer a different question. Use vague phrases to avoid stating your opinion directly. You might say, one could conclude. Well, I've narrowed your choices down to five unthinkable options. Each will cause untold misery. I pick number three. You don't even want to read them first? I was elected to lead, not to read. Number three. Hmm, option three. Does feel that way. We're going to go over the Q&A. We're going to go over the updated calendar in this video, guys. And you're joining me, Darth Shigong, gaming on the dark side. G-O-T-D-S, got this. And I'm glad all of you guys are joining me as we go deeper into not only the calendar update, but the Q&A responses, which makes me say, I have questions and I want answers. You don't have to answer that question. I'll answer the question. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. I think I can handle the truth. But this is what they got going. They say, thank you for all the questions submitted over the last few weeks. Below are answers straight from the developers on your most pressing and requested questions. Really? <laughs> Anyways, um, there's some other mumbo jumbo on there, but nothing really pertaining to anything important. Let's dive right into the first question that they've answered. When and how are you going to launch the Archmage's staff? While we have not revealed any details on the Archmage staff, either in-game or through blog posts, we are aware that players are nonetheless eagerly discussing and speculating about this exciting new relic. Therefore, we'll take this opportunity to announce and outline some details. Here we go. We have the Archmage staff, a new five-star relic. It's going to give you some interesting buffs for your Titan. Well, your Mage Titans, I should say. So... Um, it's going to give you 60% Titan and Troop damage, 40% Titan and Troop all elemental resist, and 100% all spell damage. Now, at level 5, the Titan and Troop damage and the all spell damage will be doubled. So that's 120% Titan and Troop damage and 200% all spell damage. At level 10, when an allied spell is cast upon an enemy, it's going to subtract 2% Titan Troop, all elemental resist, a max of 10 times. That's a negative 20% for them as you drop, I guess, your spells on the bad guys. This relic will be in its own standalone temple at 8,000 divine gems, which I know is more expensive than the arthropods, but you're spending an extra 1,000 DGs for a guaranteed Archmage staff. You're not having to worry about the casino roll. Some players are going to be more than happy to spend that little bit extra to have a guaranteed roll. All I know is with this relic, dude, your Archmages are gonna be pimping. The next question is talking about collection relics. Some players may have also seen some new additions to the collection relics. As of right now, here are the intended changes and additions made. Norse 1 collection relic, the Svalin, has been updated. Now you guys may be saying, what the heck's the Svalin? It is going to be this relic. Now, it's been updated. It's pretty cool looking now. Some people might have made the mistake of forging it, so I think you're SOL, but hopefully you didn't. But they have updated it. It now has 50% Titan and Troop Lightning Damage, 4 Lightning Spells, and 40% Titan and Troop Lightning Resist. Now, the added Synergy skill here at Relic Level 5 will give you 50% Base Titan and Troop Health. And at Relic Level 10, on Titan Critical, 20% All Lightning Spell Damage and Max of 10 times. That's an, an extra 200% Lightning Spell Damage with this thing equipped, man. I can see this doing some serious damage. All right, so that's not too bad. Next up, we have the Norse 2 collection, introducing the brand new Ratty. You might be saying, what the hell's a Ratty? Well, according to Norse mythology, the Ratty is the name of the driller or auger that Odin used to get himself the meat of poetry. 
Uh, basically, he had this one dude named Boggy drill him into a mountain. Odin snuck through as a snake, so he's able to get himself some tasty, tasty mead, also known as beer. I think mead's made a little bit different, but still, it's within that category. Because Odin was basically like my man Al Bundy here saying this. Give me beer or give me death. <laughs> yes, I agree, Al. I agree. All right, so here is the ratty. It is an interesting looking relic here. Um, you can see it's going to give you 50% Titan Troop all elemental damage, 80% all lightning spell damage, and 40% Titan and Troop armor piercing. It will also come with a synergy for our Norse Titans. At level 5, it's going to give you 50% base Titan and troop damage. Then at level 10 on Titan Critical, it's going to cast lightning on two enemies, a max of 10 times. It's an extra 20 lightning spells dropping. Pretty freaking crazy, man. All these extra Norse relics, man. They're really buffing these Norse guys with these new pantheons. Wait a minute. Wait a second. From Hilda and Siv and Hell. Oh man, who else fused all their lightning titans into Hell? Crap! All right, so that's gonna make this new relic a little tricky maybe for some of us to get if you got rid of those lightning titans. Next up, they talk about the Archmage collection, which is gonna be introducing the brand new relic, the Tesseract? This thing? Let's slice <laughs> No, it can't be, man. Disney would not be happy. Why? The Disney place wanted some money because they own, like, all of the movies. Yeah, Disney might have something to say. I'm not too sure. But, hey, this is the new Tesseract relic. It's pretty interesting looking. So it's going to give you guys 50% Titan and Troop all elemental damage. 40% Titan and Troop health and armor. And at the start of the battle, it's going to add three troops and three spells based off the Titan's element. As for the synergy part of this, when it's equipped to a sorcerer, when an allied spell is cast on an enemy, it's going to take away 1% of the Titan and troops melee resist a max of 10 times. So that's 10% less melee um, resist they're going to have with this relic equipped on it. So not too bad at all. The question it leaves me wanting to ask is, Evador, the poison Archmage, is coming out in a couple weeks. The last Archmage? Or are we going to have more? It's kind of like how Gaia came out after the Dragon Amber, and she's not one of them on the Relic. I'm not too sure. The next question is, why does Frigg not have a synergy with the Norse Relics? Many players have been right to point out that Frigg, despite being a god from Norse mythology, does not get any synergy bonuses from Ratty or Svalon. Rest assured that we have not forgotten about Frigg. Even with Skirblandnir equipped, this war god hungers for... And her spirit will not rest until she has reached her full potential. Oh god, more stuff on her? Dang. Next, what exactly is spell all elemental damage? Hmm, so we're talking about... Man. Spell Elemental Damage is an effect that is applied when a relic or titan increases the damage of all spells regardless of their element. Fireball inflicts fire damage, poison cloud inflicts poison damage, and so on. If a relic boosts Spell All Elemental Damage, it will boost all spells damage regardless of their elemental type on a mixed loadout. We are going to change the wording for this effect to all spell damage in the future. Note that shield spells are not affected since shield spells do not deal damage. All right, so I guess I'll clear it up somewhat. That helps. Wish they'd do the same thing for the all troop damage and army damage stuff. Next up, can you run another event where we get a choice of titans as a reward? Hmm, sounds like the dating game to me. We know the community really engaged with our last Blade and Bulwark style events, and we currently have plans to run a similarly structured event like this in the coming weeks. Pick your titan. Pick it! Woohoohoo! I choose Titan number three. <laughs> All right, the next one. Uh, I can't even believe they made this a question. Can you update the calendar? A calendar update went live earlier today. Dude, furiously. <laughs> Seriously, man, why'd they even waste space 
in here for that question. That was ridiculous, dude. Moving on. What relics will be available in Altar of Abundance next week? Will every Berserker drop two? Ooh, now this sounds interesting. They snuck it in there, but this Monday is another Altar of Abundance, and I guess it's going to be for Berserkers. Now, every four-star Berserker, including Hell and Life Spark, will, drop, will be in the drop pool at equal rates. Not the highest rates, but they'll be there. Here are some of the relics they got here. Oh my god, it's a lot of them, man. Berserker signature relics. Let's see if I can do it quickly. Egg of Ilyunka, Bronze Kashir, Heart of Syria, Anguda's Grass, Heart of Zerk, Tzirk, Beowulf Spalders, Heart of Hwit, Drakas, Seconds, Aegis, Ancient Rosetta, Bloody Sickle, Sky Shackles, Tale of Cerberus, Chains of Cerberus. Interesting. Draconis and Instruments, Draco Ignis, Draco Glacius, Draco Lapis, Drum of the Earth, Storm Kimbala, Harp of Frost, Trumpet Iron, Horn of Infernus, Pusher Pies, Bell of Despair. <gasps> and all elemental variants of of the vials, charms, and runes. Basically, guys, it's going to be a lot like this. All right, open. spend your tokens. Open your boxes. One, two, three. You get a titan. You get a titan. You get a four star relic. You get a four star relic. You get a four star relic. You get a titan. Everyone but Darshi gonna get something good. Damn you, Oprah. <laughs> Hopefully I'll get something good, but I don't know, man. My luck's been really bad lately. Nothing but one-star rolls on my relics. It, it's been bad. So who knows? Maybe it'll all get made up for me this Monday, and I'll get something freaking awesome in there. Um, yeah, looking forward to it. Next question. Can you explain the third skill on the Ark of the Covenant, please? I meant Arca relics. Well, they're going to use the Arca Lepidum as an example. Now, on allied troop death, there's a 35% chance of casting shield on the Titan and three troops with a 20 second cooldown. They go into further detail here. So, the 20 second cooldown is a unique condition on the Arca relics and means that the relics effects can only occur once within a period of 20 seconds. For example, an allied troop dies in battle. Archilipidum chance activates and shield is cast on the Titan of three troops. Archilipidum will go on cooldown for 20 seconds, which means that this effect cannot activate again until a 20 second cooldown period has passed. After 20 seconds have passed, Archilipidum is reactivated with a 35% chance to shield the Titans and three troops. This doesn't mean every 20 seconds this is going to get triggered. It just means after it gets triggered, you have to wait 20 seconds before you have a chance for it to trigger again. They're saying that in testing all the Arca relics, by spreading out the effects, it made it more beneficial and I guess made the impact of the relic better. I don't know. I, I personally don't use the Arcas. If you guys do and you like them or don't like them, please comment below because I'm kind of curious of your feelings on the Arcas and their effects. And that was the last question in the blog. However, I have a question here. Are there only going to be four Arc Mages? I'm asking that because on the Tesseract, um, and the five-star relic, you only have four Archmages. You have Growthorn and Nephilinus in there, but they're apostates. They're not Archmages. The only Archmages they mention are Necromancer, Crystallis, Minerva, and Evadur. So is that it, or is there going to be more? I don't know. Um, I'd be kind of disappointed if we don't have a Lightning Archmage or a Earth Light um, Archmage or a Pyromancer. I mean, it's kind of annoying. The next question is, I know one that people have been asking about. Are Vintage, Aventator, Gasson, and others going to get an SPP account? I mean, that's a big freaking question. And for them not even to address it after Vintage made a video and this one cool dude, man, that I look up to, Darth Shigong, he made a video on it too. And all, hey, is it going to happen? I mean, there's a bunch of, from what I've heard, there's a bunch of SPP accounts that are no longer even in use. Take those away from those players and give them to these ones. We need more SPP accounts out there, guys, period. And lastly, and most importantly, who is the best DOT content creator? And why is it Darth Shigong? Inquiring minds want to know. I know. And knowing is half the battle. All right, guys, now it's time for the calendar update portion of the video. 
new calendar got updated the other day here just kind of working on this you can see some of the events I'm glad that these updates that they're coming out with are about a month or so at a time um, or I should say a month or so worth of content to, to kind of look at and speculate it does seem kind of weird though that some of the Monday events like the small things like portal surge well that's not small to me but stuff like that isn't included as much um, it'd be nice to be able to plan for things like that especially portal surge that's a huge one for grinders all right so since we got this thing here we've got all the way up to june 10th we're going to go over each event some of them are going to be kind of speculation on my part some of them are well they're pretty easy to talk about because they're exactly what they say they are so let's go ahead and start off with the first one starting on may 11th that's a salt brother that's right on may 11th we have a salt coming up this is a great event to be able to level up some titans and some relics with some easy to grab shards and easy to grab XP potion bottles. Um, it takes a little bit of time, but it's worth it for sure. And it's pretty inexpensive for the grinders and free to play players to get quite deep into this event, if not even finish it. Next up. That's right, <laughs> finally. We've got Loki, he's coming back. And I don't know what his new skills are gonna look like, but we do have kind of an idea of his updated synergy skill with his Trickster's Blades here. Um, this was, let's see, Loki's gonna get 50% base Titan health and two times Relic Titan damage. So he'll get 140% Titan damage. And I'm pretty sure Titan damage is Titan base damage. So that's a big deal for Loki, dude. Loki was awesome. And I am so looking forward to his reskill. I will definitely be doing this event. Finish plus, that's 30,000 souls at least. So, hey guys, whew, hope you have some tokens saved up. I hope you're ready to rock. If you already have Trickster's Blades, you're probably not gonna care as much. I don't have them, so I'm definitely going for it. Yeah, finally, Loki. The next event coming up will be a solo war event on Monday, May 17th. It's Lady of the Slain. Some of us were wondering what it is. If we're going by actual lore, it's going to be Freya, because we got right here Val Freya, right? Freya of the Slain, Lady of the Slain, these are her nicknames. Um, I'm assuming that we'll finally get a synergy for the Asgardian Blade, because that's the one that came out not too long ago, well, in DOT time and all, and uh, they re-released that Norse Relic, and it didn't have a synergy, right? And all, it came out with Runa. Runa had her Equinox Egg, and we had the Asgardian Blade drop in there, but it didn't synergize with Runa. It had nothing. So it has to synergize with somebody. I'm thinking Freya. It's possible it could be a, it could have been Frigg too, but I'm aiming I'm I'm gonna put my chips in the Freya pile for the Asgardian blade, something getting a synergy for this chick. Um, I don't think they're gonna give her a, a her own individual relic. I just don't see it. But who knows? You never know with these guys, right? We'll see what happens up. But that will be your solo war, Lady of the Slain. I'm saying it's Freya. You can mark it down here. Let's see if I am correct. And finally, on Thursday, May 20th, guys, we were getting the next Archmage, the Venomancer Everdur. Now, this is from Entheogen, um, his little leaks there, which are awesome, by the way, dude. I love them to be able to kind of get a, a glimpse into the new guy. Pretty freaking badass looking Titan, dudes. Um, yeah, I have a feeling this guy is going to crush Minerva. Um, the armor piercing on this Titan um, for probably the Panthers and all that stuff is going to be through the roof um, because it seems to be the theme. <laughs> you know, you have the defender, then you have the attacker, then the defender, then the attacker, and it keeps getting more and more powerful as you go deeper into this meta. Now, is Everdor going to be the last of the Archmages? I don't know. Really don't know, um, but if you look at the Tesseract or the Archmage staff, he is the last one that is mentioned. So it's possible he's the last one, but it just seems kind of weird that there's no Lightning one, there's no Pyromancer, there's no Geomancer. Uh, we, we those need to be represented, I would assume, in the in the meta. So we'll see what happens. Maybe they'll push this meta all the way through into July. Uh, you know what I'm thinking? At least for half the year. 
and then they can move into something new, but we shall see. Coming up after the Venomancer on Tuesday, we're gonna have Theaters of War. Now, I don't see a Monday event there, so I'm assuming it'll probably be a Titans Unleashed. Uh, that seems to be kind of the recurring theme, but you never know. But Theaters of War, uh, this is a great time, guys, to get probably some relics for the next event coming up that weekend. Um, you know, the, the little boost tokens. You also get some Relics of War. There'll be three Titans in there that you can probably grab. I'm assuming there'll probably be something poison foodish like for you to grab for Everdor to prestige him up. Um, also, don't forget, you can get a lot more Titans from the Titan um, arenas or Titan temples or whatever they're going to be over there. They're all available as well during Theaters of War. You can hit all of them. So make sure you do that. Get your extra Titans, guys. All right, let's move on to the next event. This is another gamble on my part, but I think this Hittite Skies event on Thursday the 27th will be a Tarhun's return. Um, I was thinking it's a little too early to bring the Dragon Slayers back in events, but then I looked back, man, the original Tarhun's dropped back in November. So, I mean, that is like, what, six months now, seven months almost? I mean, that, that makes sense. Um, I'm not too sure if they're gonna reskill him. They might touch his prestige. I definitely can see a brand new relic for him um, to buff his grenadiers and all that stuff and kind of bring him into line with what's going on with the current meta. Uh, not that he's horrible. I mean, freaking Tarhuns is awesome for ping pong lands and stuff and quick raids. I, I use him as a defender on some of my VP lands. I mean, I don't expect him to stop everything, but he definitely ups the numbers and all. So, but yeah, I'm putting my money on Tarhuns. Uh, I'd love to see what you guys think the Hittite Skies might be in the comments below. This is great. Hey, as long as you don't make me smell your anus. <laughs> I don't get it. I'm sorry, Fry, but astronomers renamed Uranus in 2620 to end that stupid joke once and for all. Oh, what's it called now? Eurectum. Yep, Eurectum. <laughs> I mean, Uranus is going to be making a comeback on Monday the 31st of May. In a solo war, father of the Cyclops. According to lore, this dude and Gaia got it on and created the Cyclops. There was three of them in particular. But yeah, so he's the father of the Cyclops, at least according to mythology. Uh, Uranus, definitely going to be a reskill, dude. They have to reskill this guy to bring him into the current meta. He does do Omegas. Well, I don't know. I mean, maybe they can leave him alone and just have a crazy synergy relic. But either way, man, he's coming back. I like Uranus. That sound is so wrong, dude. <laughs> that sound is so, so wrong. I'll, I think I'll just leave it there and move on to the next event. All right, we have another Norse Finish Plus coming out on Thursday, the 3rd of June. Now, which one's it going to be? We only have two left. We have the Bow of the Gods, and we've got ourselves Molnir. Those two have not been re-released. Now, Molnir does have a synergy with Thor, so if they release it, it'll probably have a reskilled Thor. And over here, Bow of the Gods, I would say would probably be Odin on that one. Either way, um, pretty cool thing to go for. I already have a Molnir, so I'd probably skip that one. But I definitely would go for another Bow of the Gods, especially with the current meta and everyone being a Ranger. Having some more Ranger five-star relics doesn't hurt at all. That's a salt, brother. That's right, brother. On June 8th there, Tuesday, we're going to have another Assault event. Where's Conquest? I'm serious, man. Why isn't Conquest on this thing, dude? That kind of bugs me. But um, I'd much rather have Conquest than Assault any day of the week. But we already covered Assault and what it kind of does, so if you need to, just go back and watch that. But that's it for this, guys. <sighs> I mean, it is nice seeing the future of DOT, I guess, in here, but at the same time, I don't know. What are your guys' thoughts on the future of the game right now? The, the events are nice, but do you see a clear path into the future? Some people think they're just tossing out everything and this game doesn't have that much longer to go. Some people say this game has a long time to go. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on what the future of DOT seems like it is to you. But anyways, we got to get back to the grind. Got things going on. Crazy weekend. Um... If you are a mother, <laughs> I wish you a happy Mother's Day. If you have a mom, well, I'm wishing your mother a happy Mother's Day. And I hope everyone has a great weekend. And I'm looking forward to seeing you guys out there. This is Dar Shigong, 
And I hope to catch all of you guys gaming on the dark side.